Before we get to announce our award winners, um, I am delighted to introduce you to an exceptional engineer, an exceptional ambassador in her field too. Ladies and gentlemen, please big, give a big round of applause to mechanical engineer, fluid dynamicist and TV presenter, Dr Shinny Samara. Wow, hello. It's amazing to be here tonight to share this very special evening together. Um, I think I was asked to speak here because this year, February 10th, I gave an address at the United Nations in New York for the International Day for Women and Girls in Science, where I emphasised the need for role models, in other words, for women in STEM, to come forward and make themselves known. Enrolment in primary education in developing countries has reached 91%, so children today have the best opportunities to obtain a science education. But it's one thing to provide an education, and it's quite another to have them stay in STEM for the duration of their careers. Women often face challenges in balancing professional and family life, partly due to societal expectations and traditions. And that's why role models are so essential. They provide a living, breathing example of what can be achieved. Nine months later, here I am in a room full of role models, young women engineers who are the embodiment of hope and inspiration to young girls potentially around the world who might want to follow in your STEM footsteps. What's incredible about all of you is that you represent such a diverse assortment of experiences and pathways into engineering, be that through apprenticeships or more technical or academic routes. And your portraits, wow, I was looking at them earlier. It's like the cover of Tatler magazine and I didn't even know that you were gonna be in Cosmo, it's amazing. It's certainly an image which could help change the face of engineering. And I say change the face of engineering, but does engineering even have a face? Engineering certainly has a stereotypical wardrobe of greasy overalls, hard hats and steel toe cap boots. But ultimately, what is it that engineering, what is it that counts in engineering? Is it the way we look or is it what we actually do? Well, here's a short clip that never fails to remind me of why engineering is so important. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. Keen minds will be needed with the best possible college education. But you know what we can really use is some more scientists and some more engineers who are building and making things. That's one small step for man. That video gets me emotional every single time. Um, and it's, it's true, not everyone really knows what engineers do. 
but we are problem solvers and tinkerers. We love to analyze, test things out, design, experiment, and build things. Are these gender-specific skills? Of course not. The truth is that most of us are born curious. As newborns, we want to discover, explore, and learn about the world around us. In fact, the awe and wonder we have when we're young is exactly the kind of personality trait required for careers in STEM. A study of 500 children under the age of 10 surveyed across the USA in 2015 revealed that 41% of girls wish to go into STEM careers versus 39% of boys. It's a very encouraging statistic. I mean, it's almost an even split. But then something happens after this age to drastically change this balance. As a young girl under the age of 10, I fit neatly into this statistic. I was curiously happy to dismantle my toys to understand how they functioned. Barbie dolls, cameras, and various other electronic devices stood no chance of survival in our household. My childhood fascination suggested that I may have inherited the engineering genes that run through my family, but it certainly did not guarantee that studying the sciences would be easy. I actually found chemistry, maths, and physics really hard at school. I was often frustrated with the subject, spending a large number of my primary and secondary school days feeling like a failure and doubting my abilities. Educational pressures were beginning to override my natural curiosity for the world. A study carried out in a school in the UK last year revealed a, simu a similar temperamental switch in girls' attitudes towards maths and science during this critical age range. At 11 years old, science and maths were the favorite subjects of girls, but by the age of 14, it was their least favorite, with 70% of the girls surveyed claiming it was too difficult. The trouble is that in the UK, 14, when you're just starting to figure out your identity and becoming extremely self-conscious, is also the age at which students choose which subjects to study at GCSE, with most generally opting to follow either the arts or the sciences. It's a pretty crucial age where the decisions made have a huge impact on the rest of your life and your career. This may explain why in 2015 and 16, only 25% of STEM graduates in Britain were female. The reason why I didn't quit STEM, and believe me, there are enough times when I wanted to, um, was largely due to role models. When I was making big decisions, I looked to my elders who I respected, trusted, and admired. My most significant role models, who, who you may recognize, have included my dad, a building services engineer. Sorry, he's in the audience today. <laughs> Einstein, who you'll definitely recognize. <laughs> and Jennifer Lopez, I thought I'd throw that in there, just to make myself look cool. Um, so when I was a kid, Dad frequently took me on engineering site visits, and through him, my curiosity for real-life engineering was kept alive, even when science at school was boring and difficult. Both my parents, my mum's here as well, have been fantastically supportive and encouraging. They both echoed the sentiment of Marie Curie, who said, I was taught that the way of progress was neither swift nor easy. I now look back on my education and see... <clears throat> sorry, I can see a few people kind of... <laughs> I now look back on my education and I see it very much like the trajectory of a plane from takeoff to cruising altitude. A plane uses its engines at maximum capacity to achieve takeoff, defying gravity and creating lift. For me, takeoff is synonymous to that time around GCSEs and A-levels when our educations are just taking off. Once lift has been achieved and you've made it into university, the pilots can pull back the engines so that they don't burn out and knacker the aircraft. Carol, you'll totally get this. <laughs> Progressing at university is like climbing through various airspaces. Planes never get to their cruising altitude in a straight line. It's usually reached in steps. A pilot showed me a graph like this, and this is how they reached their cruising altitude, which was certainly the case for me at uni. Everything was in steps. And by turbulence, I'm describing the inner chaos of self-doubt and worry that I experienced all throughout my career. Am I doing the right thing? Am I capable? Am I clever enough? Do I look the part? What will people think? What if I fail? 
These are all questions that made for very, a very bumpy ride at times. Having said that, it always felt right to study the sciences and eventually follow a career in mechanical engineering, which then led me to, a, to, complete, a, to complete a doctorate in computational fluid dynamics. And these are all images of CFD. Ironically, I went from despising maths to seeing the beauty in the algorithms used to visualize how gases and liquids behave. After several years in engineering, I wanted to explore and share other areas of STEM research. And this led me to reporting on technology and innovation around the world for television networks, such as the BBC, Discovery, and Al Jazeera. Through my work, I've been lucky enough to meet some incredibly inspiring women in STEM who have lived a variety of lives. They've been pioneers, trailblazers, and individuals brave enough to take their own risks and pick themselves up after countless falls. Here's a unique example of one of them. Patricia Nkodze is unique. She's the only woman in the world who's qualified to work on airplane engines like this. She's also Ghana's only civilian female pilot. And most importantly, she's a trained health educator. I saw the planes in the bush flying overhead whilst I was cutting my trees. And I was scared to start with, but at the same time, I wanted to see what was going on. I just wanted to be around the planes and look at them. And then suddenly I fell into love with the whole idea of becoming a pilot. Patricia was trained at an airfield on the shores of Lake Volta in Ghana. Medicine on the Move is a unique project which aims to use small planes to deliver health education to remote communities. One common trait amongst all these inspirational women that I've worked with is that they all have displayed the courage and strength and determination to follow their own unique paths, despite personal limitations, as well as the limitations of traditions and stereotypes, which is what all of you here today have shown too. And that's what I believe makes a good role model. We're here this evening to celebrate your uniqueness, your perfect role models, just by being yourselves. So now get out into the world and share your experiences as women in STEM. I can guarantee you'll inspire someone else to realize their own full potential. I'm privileged to be amongst you all this evening. And whether you're taking an award home or not, you're all winners. Well done, ladies. <laughs>